Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna rip through Twitter. Again, see what people are talking about sharing on social media. I find a lot of good information that people are sharing. It's a different viewpoint than just my viewpoint uh, when I'm looking at the charts. And I like looking at charts. I like looking at what narrative is being shared, what people are trying to push on other people. Uh, and it provides me entertainment. <laughs> Some of it uh, at least does. So let's let's go through it. It's going to be related to three, pretty much three topics, wealth building, financial topics, and or commodity topics. My favorite three. And uh, I'll interject and sprinkle in uh, my financial opinions as we go. Uh, so let's see what's being shared out in social media. Uh, so again, if you want to follow me at Finding a Score Finance, and if you want to join our community, I think there's this is probably the last day that it might be open. Uh, finding-value.com turkey is the discount code. Look in the description link to see what the discounts are. So we've got Don Durrett. He's basically saying he listened to the Oliver, Michael Oliver. He's a momentum analysis guy. And Michael Oliver thinks that uh, he's expecting a launch if gold closes above 2025 and silver closes above 2513 on Thursday, the month end. So that's tomorrow, or I should say that is today, uh, since you guys will be seeing this on Thursday. We want to close above 2025 for gold and 2515. And if we do that, we get a launch. <laughs> so hopefully that occurs. Hopefully that occurs. Uh, Martin says this, he says, sell oil on recession. <laughs> Nominal GDP grew at an annualized 9% rate last quarter. <laughs> uh, current dollar GDP increased 8.9% at an annual rate uh, or $582 billion in the third quarter to a level of $27.6 trillion, an upward revision of $21 billion from the previous estimate. So we've got a lot of nominal, nominal GDP growth. That does not mean it's real growth. And I think people are confusing nominal and real. Think of one as being the paper currency going through the system, uh, which is nominal. Real means you're actually really growing. So this is, they're measuring everything in nominal. So a lot of people, they look at, they think real growth is slowing and then they don't count, account for the nominal growth. Nominal, they can print a bunch of money and get GDP to keep, to keep growing. One delegate said a deeper cut ranging from 500,000 barrels per day to 2 million barrels per day had been discussed at this OPEC uh, meeting here. So the OPEC alliance is scheduled to meet virtually tomorrow, the 30th of November, to chart a course on its production policy for next year. But with just hours until the meeting begins, it is unclear if there's a consensus among ministers on what to do next. Uh, so that's that's going to be interesting news as that comes out and the impacts that will have on the oil markets. Martin says, Sell on, sell on recession fears and bet everything on a Fed pivot. Meanwhile, U.S. quarter three GDP rises 5.2%, estimated at 4.9%, previously at 2.1%, the highest reading since quarter four, 2022. So that's throwing a wrench into the mix for the recession camp. <laughs> Money quote of the day. We buy things we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't like. You guys that? Is that what you're trying to do? Trying to buy a bunch of stuff to impress people that you don't like with money that you don't have? <laughs> uh, I'll be honest, guys. I, I really... My... Uh, what is that? My gas F? Give a S factor? <laughs> uh, I, I don't really care. I, I drive old cars couple of them they sit outside they're they're paint faded they're beat up uh we purchased purchased uh one of them new and have held it the entire time it's a 2004 
And I really, really, really don't care. I, if something breaks on it, I fix it. I just fix it myself. Uh, I've I've had new, you know, I, I've done a lot of stuff on it. Wheel bearings, uh, brakes on it. I've done half shafts. Uh, I've I've done fluid flushes. New radiator, new timing belt, head gasket. Yeah, I've done all that stuff. It just keeps going. It's a Honda, by the way, if you guys wanted to know. Honda Civic. Uh, in my humble opinion, they have let gold go up to $3,000 to slow down the physical drain from the Western vaults. It is just a matter of time, short time. So some people think that they're just going to let this thing go up because they have to, because of the physical drain from the Western vaults. The only way to slow it down, let the price go up. <laughs> that's, that's where we're at. That's where we're at. Uh, we've got gold. He says gold greater than 2100 would constitute a major breakout in his view. Uh, I would agree. Uh, if we close above 2080, that's the line in the sand, guys. The line in the sand, if we can close above that, we've got a, a major breakout. Uh, I'd like to see, obviously, first a weekly close, then a monthly close. Uh, and And I know a lot of people... The technical analysis guys are like, we need to close above this. We need to do this. We need to do that. Like, dude, I, I'm already in this stuff. I, I already bought it. I'm riding it. And I don't wait for these, you know, official breakouts uh, and or a major breakout. Uh, I buy it when it's really cheap. No one's looking at it. No one cares about it. Sitting it. Uh, yes, I do buy early. Yes, there's some entry points that I have to cost average into. That I'm at a loss at, it, it occurs. And riding the volatility early, uh, it does occur. But when you break out, it feels really good. And you're up a ton in your uh, portfolio and your position. Uh, that's how you make a lot of money. You have to buy it before everyone else is jumping on the train. And right now, everyone's starting to jump on the gold train. You can, you can see all these posts. Uh, everyone is getting... A lot more curious about gold because it's making new all-time highs almost and that's when everybody starts talking about it in some of my positions uh, i was looking today i was like man i'm up 75 percent in in a lot of my buy points and some of the positions that i just bought not that long ago uh definitely I, i'd say within six months and they just all i, I mean a, a lot of them skyrocketed uh, because people are starting to figure that out and they're starting to position in some of these exploration, little producing companies, junior exploration companies, uh, and some of the producers have done quite well. Uh, Joe Schmuckatelli, Schmuckatelli, that's a, that's a good word, Schmuckatelli. Yeah. Uh, I survived the crude oil flash crash for the third time in a week. Yeah, what is up with this, guys? Have you noticed these like crashes? Oil's like been going up pre-market, and then they crash it like right before market open or right at market open or whatever. What the heck is going on? And it, it's it's not just like once. It's all. I mean, this is the third time in a week. It, it, it's ridiculous. What the heck is going on? Because uh, I was looking at it, I was like, oh sweet, oil is going to be up. And then I looked in the morning, I was like, how is it down? How is this down? Like, how is it moving this fast? And maybe it's liquidity in the system. I don't know. It is crazy, though. Uh, authorities will start the transition process for the orderly and safe closure of the mine. So in Panama, they're shutting down their first quantum mine after ruling, President says. President says authorities will start process to close mine. Decision is likely to lead to legal battle arbitration. You know, I am pretty surprised by this. This is a mine that is in operation and running that they are going to close. And First Quantum, it, that, that's a big company. And this is a big mine. Uh, Franco Nevada has a big royalty uh, on this mine as well. So I'm, I'm like thoroughly surprised uh, I am now, you know, this this interjects a little bit of fear uh, into myself even. Because you start looking at some of the mining companies, and I thought, 
you know, from my perspective, and I wasn't in first quantum, but from my perspective, though, I mean, if they're willing to close a mine that's already got all of their stuff kind of signed off uh, and, and the permits and all this stuff, and they shut it down after the fact that it's already open, I'm kind of like, man, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty rough. Imagine the companies that haven't even built the mine yet. Like, what chance do they have? So there's probably a lot more risk out in this world than maybe people are uh, putting towards these mining companies. There could be a lot more risk than what we think uh, it, there is in terms of mining. Uh, JC says, notice how they're moving together. It's because this isn't the same environment that we were in in the past 20 years. Correlations change. The longer it takes investors to adapt, the more painful it will be. My suspicion is that we'll, it will take the worst investors the longest. And this is just really interest rates. So as TLT bond prices go up, interest rates fall, and the S&P 500 goes up with the declining interest rates. The S&P 500 and bonds are trading in tandem together. And that, that's historically been pretty accurate. Uh, so what do you think is going to happen if the bond market goes down and interest rates go up? The S&P 500 is going to go down. If they do QE or they do something to, to increase liquidity in the market, uh, we could see bond prices go up, S&P 500 go up, but we'll see, in my opinion, commodities could go up even faster. That's that's where I'm at, commodities. Christopher Aaron says, silver's approaching only its fourth primary trend break in the last 12 years. Previous signals are shown below. How high will silver surge this time? You do not want to be buying after the breakout. And here we are. These are the four breakouts. Seven bucks plus seven bucks plus 12 bucks. And we're going to do what? On a break of 25.20 is what he's. So silver's approaching only the fourth primary trend break in the last 12 years. Prepare now is what he says. I'm already prepared, buddy. <laughs> uh, Brent oil breaks out and the trend Trend line is long, or target 86 bucks is what he's got. Uh, so that's what he's got for the target zone or target price. Uh, 86 bucks on Brent Oil breaking the downtrend line. A strong red day for uranium, and the bullish sentiment has calmed down again. Uh, after a 70% run in six months, I wouldn't be surprised to see another 10 to 15% being shaven off the equities before this correction is over. Embrace it. It isn't the first pullback. It won't be the last. Uh, and that is true. We have pulled back in uranium, uh, and maybe there is further to go in this pullback. So let's ride it. We just got to ride it. That's all we got to do. JC Parrots, another one, says, one of the best parts about a bull market is watching all the people who missed it try to chase it higher. Uh, it's good times. So again, we continue to see, we, we continue to expect a year-end chase with many money managers missing this new bull market. One other reason, stocks tend to do quite well in December during a pre-election year. So that's what they're saying. Uh, the charts look good in, in some of the sectors. Uh, I'm, I'm sticking with commodities. That's what I know. Uh, to do well under an expansionary phase of real estate, and that's what we're in. Uh, so again, I stick with what I know. I stick with what I think is going to do well. Uh, I don't chase really much of anything else like the S&P 500. I, I'm not going to chase it. U.S. Bank's unrealized losses in quarter three 2023 is $684 billion. It's up 22.5% from the prior quarter, primarily due to an increase in mortgage rates. Banks are in rubble. Look at the losses here, boys. It's stacking up for the banks. Bill Rosen with the uranium prediction. So let's see what he's got on this prediction for uranium. So I'm going to squeeze this boy in there. There we go. He says, 
We leave you with a prediction as U.S. utility buyers realize that decades of ample secondary supply are gone. They will panic, scramble to secure volumes, and drive prices much higher. Eventually, they may be induced to approach the various financial vehicles, including the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust, to seek the uranium they need. Ultimately, they might be forced to pay large premiums to spot prices to secure long-term supply. We believe this will likely mark the top of the uranium bull market. This could be many years away. Until then, we believe the uranium price rally will persist. So even though we're getting a little bit of a sell-off in the short term, for some of the equities, remain bullish is what he's basically telling us, and that this trend should stay intact for many years. Be patient. Be patient, my fellow uranium investors. Uh, here's a thread on Game of Trades, and I like making comments about other people's uh, comments here. Oil just broke below major levels, an ominous sign for the economy. Here's a thread about how oil just broke below major levels, even though it didn't break below major levels. So two, the World Economy, or the World Bank, recently warned of a potential 75% increase in oil prices due to escalating tensions in the Mideast. That would push oil to a high of 145 per barrel. But despite these tensions, oil prices have been dropping for the past month. Geopolitical tensions historically cause oil prices to rise due to supply fears. While Israel and Palestine are not major oil players, Iran could disrupt oil supply. By the Straits of Hermes, where 20% of the oil passes, cutting... See, here's the whole thing here, guys. I read all this, right? Why don't you just pull up a chart? Why do you need to look at, you know, read all of this narrative BS? It's just, like, you can look, but, but there's nothing here. Like, the World Bank recently warned, it doesn't matter what the World Bank thinks. Next. Geopolitical tensions historically cause oil prices. Okay, fine, but what does the chart say? How are people positioning their money? But despite recent OPEC Plus production cuts, the Middle East tensions, oil has broken down from key moving averages, signaling investors are more concerned about falling demand than supply. Here's the, the problem. The trend line is this, this trend line here. So we break in the steep, the steep trend line first. We can break a horizontal next then we'll start to move on higher. So again, I would be very careful listening to some of these guys on Twitter and YouTube because they talk a lot about fears. They talk a lot, a lot about fears. So, you know, here's my opinion here. C99, this is the bottom of the commodity to stock ratio. This was the bottom of the commodity to stock ratio. This is the first fractal so it's first wave, second wave, third wave, fourth wave, fifth wave. This here, I think, is first wave pullback. And the minus 43% is this is the bottom here. Now, could this be an A, B, C correction where we come back? It could be. It could be. We're gonna have to wait and see and see what that what, what occurs here. But everyone's pushed on the bearish sentiment right now. And bearish sentiment right now, that's usually when you get around. That's what I'll say. Dean Christians, he says, a trading system that uses the Goldman Sachs Financial Conditions Index to assess whether financial conditions are easing or tightening triggered a new buy signal for the S&P 500. What do you think, guys? Uh, I mean, we've obviously broken this falling megaphone pattern to the upside here. Uh, and they've got a buy signal on the S&P 500 getting things even more confusing. Robert Prechter thinks that this is a double top and that we are going to move way lower using Elliott Wave analysis. Goldman says, oh, we're going to go higher. Uh, Game of Trades probably thinks we're going to crash. Uh, I've got a lot of other ones that think the markets are going to crash, and I've got a lot of people that think they're going to go higher. Who's right? Who's wrong? <laughs> Everyone's got a different opinion uh, on the markets here. Uh, what I what I think, uh, you know, the S and P five hundred. That's not where I would be playing. That's that's not a spot that I would be playing. I think we could go higher in the short term, uh, but overall, I think we're going to go lower over over time. If interest rates were to go up, 
If interest rates were to go down, then I think the S&P 500 is going to go up. So this is a call basically on interest rates. That's, that's the way I see it. And if interest rates go up, uh, financial conditions would loosen and it would be good for stocks uh, in, in the short term here if financial condition, conditions loosen. Uh, bonds going for the breakout, TLT. So bond prices breaking to the upside will push the S&P 500 higher because that means yields are going down. It means financial conditions are loosening is what that means. The housing market is rapidly weakening. Mortgage demand has plummeted, reaching levels not seen in 25 plus years. Well, yeah, I would, I would expect that if interest rates went up exactly like they did. So, of course, mortgage demand has plummeted. I'm, I'm not going to refinance at the interest rates if my mortgage is where, you know, 2.75%. Not going to refinance. There's no point. Uh, Jesse says, we are starting to see uh, signs of a hook higher in certain metrics that could presage a second wave of upside surprises and inflation. This is the M2 annualized six-month rate of change. And you can see the move higher in that M2 annualized six-month rate of change. Uh, that is liquidity into the market. That's why Goldman Sachs is putting, hey, look, we could be, this could be bullish here. That's why we're seeing a breakout on TLT, which is the 20-year bonds. That's what we were going through right up here. It's the liquidity coming back in the system. Probably driven by the Fed, I guess. Hedge fund positioning in energy stocks is near year-to-date lows. We like to see this when uh, you want to start looking at potential investments in oil uh, when, or energy stocks. It does energy stocks. So when, when these guys get all uh, bearish, that's a really good time to go, go long. Then when they get really bullish, then it's like, okay, I'll just wait it out. Uh, this aged well, if anyone was wondering why Cape size rates are ripping despite the doomer China narrative. Uh, he says, just about any way you slice it, Chinese iron ore inventories are at rock bottom despite high imports over the last couple months. A very constructive demand set up for Cape size dry bulk. And I've seen bearish dry bulk calls here uh, on other people. And he's calling for bullish. Who's right? Who's wrong? How do you know? I, I can tell you this. I go and I pull up dry bulk shipping uh, individual company charts. They look super bullish to me. So when I look at dry bulk shipping, I look at the charts. I'm like, these all look ridiculously good. Not bad. Uh, so that's what I believe. I, I believe the charts and the way that I can read the charts. Uh, I also believe that iron ore has broken to the upside. So I believe that this narrative is probably correct. Uh, the U.S. economy is already in recession. Through quarter three, GDP grew by 5.2%. Government spending contributed 5.5%. So without that spending, GDP would have contracted by 0.3%. Government spending borrowed money doesn't reflect real economic growth. It will only lead to higher inflation. And that's that difference between real economic growth and nominal GDP growth. Everyone's looking at this from a real perspective. They're not looking at it from a nominal perspective. I'm looking at this from nominal. So I think GDP can keep going up even though the economy looks bad because of government spending. So nominally, it goes up. Real, it shrinks. November is over tomorrow. Gold on pace for the highest monthly close in history. That is very bullish, guys. Very bullish in this cup and handle. Let's break this thing to the upside. Let's clear 2080. Uh, or 2100, get up above it, close up above that, and let's rip this thing. This is not my call. We are at an inflection point for precious metals and the mining industry. Gold is about to break out, and a major repricing in the miners and silver is likely to be the next development. And someone else said, is this another false start on gold and silver, the, the, the quintuple top? Yeah, if we can get a break here, guys, I think the miners could do some crazy stuff. It, it is possible. 
Uh, and I think silver will too. And I think silver junior miners could do even crazier stuff. Does why does OPEC not have to worry about ceding market share to U.S. shale in 2024 plus? The Raymond James estimates that two thirds of this year's surprisingly large production growth came from private operators, many of whom were goosing production ahead of sales processes. Given now limited inventory lives, this is not repeated, repeatable going forward. So this is the Permian core inventory life. You can see that it's pretty bare on the left-hand side here. Uh, and then you've got the right-hand side. Core inventory in terms of life. Wow. Coming on down. Uh, this is, I wanted to read this, guys. Um, so just, just. I, th I think this is a good quote from Gary. He says, no, the world doesn't owe you anything. It doesn't owe you free health care. It doesn't owe you free education. It doesn't owe you housing. It doesn't owe you a part of someone else's wealth just because they've been more successful than you. Accept this cold, hard truth. The world isn't fair. And the impulse to try and make it so has created more human suffering, death and poverty than all the pandemics and wars in history. It's up to you to manage your life. It's not anyone else's responsibility to take care of you. If you make crappy decisions, spend your whole life climbing rocks and never planning for the future, then don't complain when you have no insurance and can't pay for your hospital bills. When you break your leg or get cancer, you, you chose that path. Now you have to pay the price. If allowed to take hold, social justice, just a fancy phrase for socialism, will ultimately destroy everything it touches. It will turn the mightiest empire into a shanty town. Need proof? Just look at Cuba, Venezuela, Argentina, or basically any country throughout history where socialism has been allowed to take root. Socialism is an incredibly seductive narrative, and politicians invariably drift toward socialism during hard times when the lower and middle class are suffering. Take from the rich and give it to those less well off. It's a tremendous policy for getting votes, but it destroys innovation and ultimately reduces everyone to poverty. Well, except those in government. The only people that ultimately benefit from socialism are the politicians. My advice, get busy improving your own life because the world doesn't owe you a damn thing. That's what Gary says. And you know what? That's what I've embraced myself. And I just get out there, <clears throat> make it happen. Uh, I was pretty heavy into sports my whole life, and I hate to say it, but it's it's just based off on how good you are. They tell you you suck. I mean, that's basically what you you are. You suck. I mean, it, it is what it is. And what that taught me is <clears throat> sometimes there's things that you suck at, <laughs> and there's some things that you're really good at. And I what I do is I double down on the things that I'm really good at. And and if I suck at something, you no, know, some people say, well, that's just something you need to practice at. And, and, you know, as I get older, there's certain things that I don't want to be good at. I just don't care to be good at certain things. I want to be really, really good at, at other things that I am interested in. So that's what I focus on. That's what I focus on. Uh, here's XME. Uh, so XME looks ready yet again to outperform the S&P 500. Uh, up from the commodities bear market low and above the black line, we will see the metals and mining sector start moving very strongly, I think. I think the second inflationary wave is soon upon us. And this is a double bottom. We've broken out, and this is our, our we're, we're sitting on top of what would be considered the ideal buy point. So we're doing our back test right now, and we're about to break to the upside. It's looking pretty good. Uh, an unprecedented shift, AI and other technological advancements now require more capital investment than sectors traditionally associated with natural resources. To be precise, the S&P 500 tech companies, including Amazon, Alphabet, collectively allocate a higher annual capital expenditure than the combined spending of the energy and material sectors. So that's kind of interesting there uh, about the capex that these tech companies are running to basically keep up with the with each other. Uh, here's another one. Another milestone for gold in progress of being overtaken. Continued outperformance versus the producer price index could bring price in excess of 2550. That's kind of interesting there. 
so shoulder, head, shoulder, and a break out of the neckline. That looks really good too for gold outperforming producer price index. I just looked at this chart. I mean, this is silver on a quarterly. We're ready to rip here, guys. This is this is a breakout in the making. Definitely. And gold as well. Breakout in the making. Uh, here's Brent 2020 to 2024 versus 2004 to 2008. Look at the overlap here, guys. <laughs> if you scale it, uh, you get a price around 250 bucks in, in the orange line there. 250 bucks, and that's Pierre Andrade. Uh, and that's where I'm going to end it, guys. That's what I've got for today. So give me a thumb up for, for the content. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the website if you haven't. Uh, Turkey's the discount code. I think it's still valid. Maybe I'll move it one more day over for you guys. But uh, that's what I've got for today. So um, everything's still looking A-OK -okay in commodities. Hopefully everyone's having a good day. Uh, and we'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.